And so now next, what you want to do, and this is the real precarious part, okay, because we're going to take a really sharp tool like this utility blade um, or a stone real sharp stone, real sharp stone tool like this, um, and we want to outline it, okay? For speed, I'm just going to use this blade. Now, you want to outline this and be very careful. Make sure nobody's behind you in case you slip. And you just want to run the exacto blade. Keep your fingers away in case you slip along the outline. To one side of your hole. Okay? And then... I want to go on this side of the inside of the eye to that side, okay? And then I'm going to split it down the middle, actually, at this point. Again, be very careful, okay? So what I want to do is just kind of follow this line and use my sharp tool to score my cutting lines, okay? Again, this is very, very... You got to be very, very careful with the sharp tools here in case they slip. Okay. So right about there. You probably can't see this on camera. If this was a stone tool, if I was using this primitively, again, I would just kind of abrade this all the way down. Again, it would take a while, but I'd get, I'd get, I'd get there. All right. So once you've outlined this with your sharp tool, then you're going to take a uh, hard but Slow, somewhat blunter tool, and this one has just a small pocket knife with a nice little ring here. This actually the tip broke off on me, which is fine, um, because it works perfect as as a pry bar, as a pry pry bar. So I want to get in between my my slit that I just cut and start to kind of pop up the fibers. Watch your fingers and just start popping up the fibers along my cut line. Okay. Then I want to go to the other side, find my cut lines, and start to pop it up. Okay? You want to work your way down on each side of your cut lines and just start popping it up, popping them up like so. And then on this side, I work I work from the back to the front, popping up like so. Okay. So carefully, I'm doing a lot of this kind of off camera because I want to focus and cut and to concentrate and not cut myself. But this is my first pass. Okay. This is my first pass and I'm just slowly carving this out. And what I want to do is on both sides of my cut lines is pry up the fibers in the wood. Okay, so there's one piece gone there. And clean that out to kind of show you. It's a little bit better, but you can kind of see. And I want to do this all the way around. Okay. And again, this is pretty. It's a quarter of an inch thick. If this was thicker, it'd be a lot of work. Okay. You don't want to go more than a quarter of an inch. Um, and actually, yeah, I wouldn't go much more than a quarter, much thinner than a quarter of an inch either, because uh, some wood can be quite brittle when you try to work with it. Um, <clears throat> and a quarter of an inch tends to give a pretty good. Uh, pretty good strength and so again when you when you go when you do your initial cut and you pry out make your gouge go along your outline being very careful with your sharper tool and just cut more and you're going to kind of repeat this process till you get all the way to the other side like so just want to make sure that this is sharp and deep enough Again, I'm going to take this here, and again, I'm going to find my cut line in here and kind of pop it up. That's one side. I want to find the cut line on the other side and pop it up, just like so. Okay, <clears throat> we're about halfway there. Um, I've got this pretty much cut out on one side here. It almost started to split on me. And if it, if it does that, then you know that you didn't uh, stay within your uh, hole. You didn't stay within your hole radius. Um, or um, 
you you went out, and it's not really that big of a deal, especially if you have some some glue, some hide glue, some wood glue, some pine pitch, super glue, whatever, um, to just fix the split when it's done. But it's not that big of a deal. It's not even you can barely it's not even really noticeable. So just gonna be more careful going through the other side here. Again, the process is I want to take my sharp cutting tool, which in this case is a exacto blade or a utility blade, and starting within the radius of my ending hole, I want to follow the outline and cut like so. Again, be careful if you have other people around you when you're doing this sort of work so you don't somebody walk up behind you and you slip and you cut for you know little kids especially or animals um, or yourself. So go really carefully and slow. Pay attention. Just cut straight up. Okay? And then follow the outline all the way around. To the end of your, your stop hole. And then you take your prying tool and you go inside of your slit and you start to work up the fibers on each side kind of alternate alternating popping up these fibers and you do this until you get all the way down to the other side and you can almost pop it out all right we've got this pretty much ready to pop out um, just want to be careful when you do it this way I'm going to push it out this way like so some pieces still want to stick onto it very gentle kind of Pop it out through the back. And there you got it. <clears throat> so for the most part, this is the rough of your netting needle and uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to cut out the convexity on the end of the needle that also holds and it holds the uh, holds your cordage and again the concept the technique I'm going to use is the same being very careful I'm just going to kind of outline this and kind of whittle my way down and take my prying tool and then work against that and just pop these fibers out like so until I get the rough shape. That will save me a lot of abrading. Um, now, if there was a rough stone that, <clears throat> that had some convexity to it, um, I could definitely kind of abrade it on that. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be too much of a rough um, stone, this, this, this shape. Another way to do this would be to burn it. Um, that would take some time and a little bit of skill, but it could be done. Uh, and you would just lay your coals, small bits of coals on here in the shape that you want it, and blow on it with a, a straw or reed or bone tube or something um, to heat it up. And then when they come to ash, uh, when you've got the char here, you take your, your cutting tool and you scrape away the char, and then you repeat the process until you get all the way through. So that's another way to do um, shapes inside of a piece of wood, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and then I'm going to, I'm going to abrade down the sides here. Um, again, uh, concrete steps work pretty good. Um, you know, a shirt form, rasp, uh, sandpaper, you know, so. And really, the concept is I just want to have something that's going to hold. So if you can imagine this without the outlines, this is good enough. Adding a point to it um, really just kind of makes it a little easier to work it through, in, excuse me, in between fibers. Um, but, you know, for the most part, this is really what you end up with and really what you want. But I'm going to go ahead and shape this, shape this down a little bit. All right, here we go. This is pretty much what we ended up with. Um, this is a netting needle, a wooden one. Um, you can make them out of bone. I'm sure a really skilled Flint and can make one out of stone if they wanted to. Um, you find them in stores, arts and craft stores. They're made out of plastic and other materials, resin and stuff. And this is, would be a gauge. It's kind of a rough, rough gauge. I really don't use a gauge when I 
make nets, um, but it helps keep the mesh uh, the mesh is even, and when you're doing your knots around, um, this is the gauge is what you do. The, the inserting the gauge and wrapping, making your knot around it is what helps keep the meshes uniform. Um, and again, I'm just gonna you can just finish this off with some sandpaper here, or a sandstone at work. And again, I'm starting off with the 60 grit here, and then when I get it shaped down to where I want it to, I can go ahead and. Um, finish it off with with you know 30 grit, you know, or excuse me, with uh, 100, 150 grit, and just kind of going up, up the up the line to make it smoother and finer. And then you can burnish this with a hard stone to compress the fibers and make it a little harder. And then you'd probably oil it with a little bit of uh, uh, tallow or uh, some linseed oil. And then you'd seal it with maybe you know um, if you choose to do so polyurethane. Um, or a little bit of tarnish um, to stain it as well. So you can finish it however you want, wood burn it, paint it, make it all pretty if you want to. So this is just kind of a basic way of making a netting needle. And this is how you would load it. So I have a, a ball of um, dog bane fibers here. And what you do is, I'm gonna go ahead and just let that drop to the floor. And what you do is you go ahead and you wrap your dog vein around and then you let it, you start it off like so. And then you flip it over and thread it through the eye of the needle and then come back the other side and thread it through the eye of the needle on the other side and then on the other side like so. So you're just kind of loading it all the way through just like so. So when you're working your net, you're essentially unthreading this, and it's unthreading as you go. So you don't have to, you basically have your, your ball in your hand, which is wrapped around your needle as you're making your knot. So it's pretty nifty, it works pretty good. And uh, hopefully soon, I will be able to put together a video on making a basic net using the netting needle.